Today on the Kick Your Boots Up podcast is none other than three-time world champion Tim O'Connell. Tim, it's so good to have you here. Thanks for not only being a Justin and Dorsey and wearing the brand well, but also just taking the time out of your busy day to be here with us. Well, I'm glad to be here. You know, you're a rock star in and out of the arena. I love following you on social media. You always seem to have a positive attitude, and and that's crucial and beneficial for the sport of rodeo. Talk to us about the importance of having a good, positive attitude day in and day out. You know, it's like it is a struggle to have a positive attitude, but like the most things that I've thought about lately is, you know, especially showing up to a rodeo, if you're not positive about the animal that you're going to get on, uh, usually it doesn't work out. Nine times out of 10, if you have a negative mindset that the horse isn't going to be enough or that your riding style isn't going to match up with that horse, then it's usually probably not going to work out. You'll find something in your your mind or your thoughts while you're riding, why this isn't feeling good and why you're not going. Then you start going through the motions of the ride and it doesn't look it doesn't look good to the judges and it doesn't pen out. It doesn't ever pencil out on paper for you. So I've really started to, you know, get excited about everything about a rodeo you know it's not a I have to it's I get to attitude and you know I get to go ride bucking horses and I get to get on every kind of get different kind of style of horses and you know I get to go to all these places over the country and and I just love what I get to do honestly and you're top notch at it you you do I love that you said you get to do things and it seems like you know your stuff too obviously you can't be a world champion without not knowing a little bit of something tell us about your family background and how you got started in rodeo so my dad was a pickup man. Uh, he picked up for survey rodeo for like 20 plus years. And then he, you know, when we started being born, you know, he started kind of staying around the house a little bit more and he worked for three heels rodeo for a good portion as well. And we just started rodeo, you know, like we, instead of every weekend, we'd just go see my dad at whatever rodeo he was at. So like we would always pack up on a Friday morning and skip school and go rodeo for the weekend. And, you know, that's how my brother and I just kind of fell, fell in love with rodeo. You know, it was just, it was part of our DNA at that point. And we ran around for, you know, years and years. And then the summertime would come and we only lived 10 miles from the Three Hills Ranch uh, and the Three Hills Rodeo Company. So we would go and spend a majority of our summer over on the ranch, working the ranch and then going rodeo with them all summer. So it was really in the cards for us to pick up pick up this lifestyle and my brother did he rode uh, bulls saddle bronx was a bullfighter was a pickup man and uh, now he runs championship pro rodeo and I always fell in love with the competition side of things you know I was a bull rider all through high school and you know I rode sheep and steers and all that and then I kind of figured out that I was more of a bull getter honor than a bull rider and I uh (laughs) I found bareback riding when I was a senior in high school and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And then, you know, I just kind of got obsessed with the sport and how it worked and the ins and outs and the fine details. And here we are. Wow. And I'm sure so many have so many different questions about that because I know I do, but I want to back up a little bit where you said your brother was a bullfighter. Uh, That's, you know, pretty incredible that he's worn the mini hats, but now has become a stock contractor and and owns the company. Have you ever tried to be a bullfighter? What did that end up for you? What end up like for you? <laughs> I I helped at the practice pen one time, and I yeah I don't want anything to do with those animals. <laughs> like like uh, I told him, you guys get one pass, and I'm gonna give you one good pass, and then you're on your own after that. Like you can save your own butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not getting up and running after I I made the pass, then that's your own fault. That's as good as you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> mad respect for Dusty and Cody then because those guys are crazy for doing what they do <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but uh, a little bit I want to go back um to your story you kind of you and your brother said that you you just knew um rodeo and you you kind of fell into this this love and appreciation for the sport that's huge every cowboy has an love and appreciation for either their animals the way of life the get up and go what do you think is your favorite part about the sport of rodeo you know like I think it's the family that you get to make with it. You know, like when I was talking with my wife, when we got married, you know, we had to invite my family, her family, and then we had to invite our rodeo family. You know, like you make so many lifelong friends going up and down the road because you see them on a weekly basis. You know, you talk to them on a weekly basis. And then unfortunately, you know, like when you retire from the sport, it kind of all goes away, but you know, your family never really goes away. So yeah, you just get to, you get to live a whole 
different life for, you know, for a rough stock rider, it could be 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, however long your, your body's going to let you do this, but you create a whole different life with a whole different family that uh, comes from all walks of life. And that's what I love the most about this sport. And it sounds like for you, since you're not only a one-time world champion, you're a three-time world champion. You've been there, done that. You've kind of mastered a little bit the traveling aspect of it, being away with your fa- being away from your family, joining your rodeo family, things like that. What is some insider advice that you have for someone who is struggling on the rodeo road? Maybe they're in a rut or maybe they're just not getting it. They're not figuring out um, the get up and go all the time. What's, what would be your piece of advice for them there? I would just stay hard-headed. I mean, you, this is a grind. <laughs> this is nothing just because your winter doesn't go very good doesn't mean that your summer can't. I mean, there was a time where I didn't start rodeo until Reno and I finished sixth in the world. You know, like yeah. it's a, it's a grind. You have to roll with the punches and uh, you just can't count yourself out at any given moment. You have, you got to believe in yourself. You know, we pay an entry fee, so you're betting on yourself anyway. So you might as well take that with full, full force and go, go full on into it. Cause that's, that's all you got. If you can't bet on yourself then who you got to bet on, then you don't, then you don't, if you don't want to bet on yourself and believe that you can do it, then you need to step away from this game because it is too dangerous not to believe in yourself. Wow. And, and you've seen some pretty high highs, obviously with winning the world a few times and then some pretty low lows, even recently. Well, not so recently anymore. Let's, let's act like it's longer than it was. Um, you had your thumb injury. Tell us about the thumb injury and how you were able to mentally overcome that, which made you physically overcome that. Well, I had my thumb, I tore the ligament that stabilizes my thumb in August, late August too, in uh, Kennewick, Washington. And, you know, that was 100 days before the NFR started. So I had them go in, surgically tack my thumb back together, and then try to get my grip strength back to where it was. And it came back literally four days before I left for the national finals. You know, and that was with all my PT and all my surgeons and all my, my, my training, that the training that you have to do to get ready for the finals anyway, you know, it was a big mix of everything. But I had the I had the right people in my corner. I got the people in my village that believe in me and believe that I can do things that other people can't do. And they'll push me to that point too. And it was having guys like Dr. Sean Scott set this surgery up and checking in every week and having uh you know, keeping me in check of what I can and can't do, but also letting me do a little bit more. But I mean, like he really ran the ship on that and he got with my trainer and he got with my coaches and he gave them very black and white instructions on what I can and can't do. And I followed that to a T and I I followed that to a T because I knew that he was going to make sure that I was ready to go. And I was ready to go for the national finals. And it was, it was, a, I mean, it's a, that was a very quick turnaround from having that kind of a thumb injury. And being able to only have just gotten your grip strength back four days before the NFR, that had to have been a little bit nerve wracking, right? No, I mean, not really. I knew it was coming. I didn't know if I was going to get it all the way or not, but it was pretty close. I mean, I was really happy when I see my left hand finally go over my right hand and because I am left handed dominant. So uh, it did give me just more confidence going into the finals that I wasn't going to have to worry about my thumb. And even more Do- confidence. Dr. Sean Scott, his, uh, his motto is if I'm not nervous, you can't be nervous. Ooh. And he told me he was more nervous when they took my tailbone out last year than I was, than he was for this thumb. So I was pretty happy about that. And everything's hindsight 2020, right? So he probably wouldn't have told you at the time of your tailbone that he was nervous, but after the fact, it was okay that he said it, right? (laughs) Yeah, it was okay that he said it after that. (laughs) And kind of talking a little bit about that more, you are a prime example of utilizing the Justin Sports Medicine team to the fullest, because even now you have to, you know, continue to watch your thumb and make sure more injuries like that don't happen. How important is it to you to have the Justin Sports Medicine at some of the rodeos that you're at? it's crucial like I only really go to rodeos now that do, that do have the Justin sports team there you know like there's no other professional sport that's going to have you go out on your own without without doctors there without um, PTs there um, trainers there and what we do for a living is very hard on your body it is very taxing and you need them guys to be there for your bumps and bruises and the tape that we go through and and what the ins and outs of what it takes to be a rodeo caliber 
rodeo cow cowboy at the highest caliber now and you know there is just time after time where your bruises just end up battling up and if you, you got to have guys like the justin sports medicine team there and that's why you know i really only go to rodeos that have them there anymore and they are pretty good about um, prevention as well. So not only do they help you once you get injured, they they help along the way with prevention. But you know, since being a cowboy is, is your professional job, you're a professional rodeo cowboy, that it's important for you to maintain your body, um, to treat it all well, to work out, to get your balance right. You mentioned earlier that you have coaches. Tell us about your coaches and what you're able to do for strength training, how you balance, all of it, how you get prepared and get ready for the rodeo season. So I have a personal trainer that I've been with for the last, oh gosh, seven, eight years now. I mean, he knows me to a T and, uh, you know, we work out accordingly and we, you know, he has to adjust his stuff all the time because I'm always coming in with injuries, but, you know, he knows when to push me. He knows when to maintain my body. He knows when like, we need to build it back up and we need to slow it back down. Like he, he gets all that. And, uh, I also still work with my rodeo coach from college on my technique. You know, I, I always thought, you know, that guy really sharpened the ax. So why not continually let him do that? So I still, uh, I still live in the town I went to college at. I'm actually a, an assistant coach on the rodeo team now. And then he still works out with me and uh, helps me out, helps Jess out. Uh, there's a bunch of us that, you know, have utilized staying in Marsh, Missouri and, you know, figuring out what bareback U is all about. And yeah, and just the, you know, my wife, obviously too, you know, like she's, she's a huge team player on this all deal. Like she helps me with, uh, you know, all my endorsements, making sure I'm in the right places at the right time. I mean, people don't understand how hectic Cowboy Christmas is when you're running around trying to do autograph sessions. And, uh, you know, she really keeps me in track on a daily basis and make sure that I have my ducks in a row so I can focus on riding bucking horses. You know, I'm so thankful you brought her up because I'm really curious to hear the men's perspective on rodeo marriage. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there too that want to know more. Is it hard to be married and, and go on the rodeo road? Or let's talk about the highs and lows of that as well. I mean, it is. Um, it is and it isn't, right? You know, the the hard part is is leaving your wife and leaving your kids. That's the hardest part for sure. But at the same time, I, f I feel like they all knew what they signed up for when they started dating or marrying a rodeo cowboy. <laughs> you know, the best the best is with these rode the rodeos in the winter is for the last how many years we've been able to bring bring the family down to Texas with us. You know, with rodeos that have multiple days uh, where you're competing, it, I usually will bring my family down with me. Like it's just a no brainer and kind of rodeos like that throughout the summer that you have more time at, I'll bring my family with me. And the other fact is like, I don't, I don't hang out on the road either. Like if, as soon as the rodeos are done for the week, I get the next flight back home. Like, and that's just how we've set up our relationship. You know, that doesn't work for everybody, but that works for us. And that's what keeps our marriage happy is, a. Uh, not wasting any time when I could be with them. And what a cool perspective too. I'm sure that's changed over the years. You know, as you were younger and single, I'm sure you did like to enjoy hanging out a little bit more, but it is is really, really cool to see you mature and grow and become a husband and be the dad that you are. That's so inspiring to a lot of guys out there and a lot of women too, that are just looking for, you know, that aspect of it all. You guys are putting the limelight a lot, but then I feel like you're, um, you're better, better half, whether you're a male or female in the limelight, they don't always get the credit. So I always like to throw that in anytime we get to a chance because wives and husband of rodeos are incredible. <laughs> um, you know, you can't do anything without them in the back behind the scenes, but kind of going back to um, your coaching and your mental game and your toughness, I'm sure there's a lot of advice that you'd like to give to people that, you know, are wanting to, they're either in a rut in rodeo, they're wanting to get started in rodeo, they're young, they're old, they're trying to get back at it over, um, you know, overcome injuries. What are some things that you'd like to tell people? I know you mentioned having a hard head, but maybe something else. Um, you get, you're only as good as who you travel with. That's another thing too. Like you got to surround yourself with guys that, um, want the same thing or have done the same thing that you're going for. Like if you surround yourself with three winners, you'll be the fourth winner. You know, like you're only as good as the people that you, the company that you keep at the end of the day. I mean, you'll just kind of rise to that occasion. So I would say finding people that want the same things as you do or compete at the same level as you do that are striving to be great at what they do, 
that's the biggest thing. You know, when I rodeo with Jess and I rodeo with Cole Franks, you know, like we are all trying to win a world title. I mean, it keeps that rig very competitive on a daily basis. You know, you have to show up and do your job to the best of your abilities. You don't get a day off or you don't get paid. You know, that's that's one thing I would uh, encourage everybody to do is to find traveling partners that keep you accountable. And you guys have a good thing going too. Uh, I know that you guys experience a lot of life together in and out of the arena, and that's that's key as well. But kind of speaking of an in arena win, Jess winning the world this previous NFR, what was it like for you being there beside him, getting to lift him up, cheer him on? Because you've experienced that same as well. You know, it's uh, it was exciting. You know, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I didn't want to win the world, but uh, man, he kicked our butts. <laughs> <laughs> He just did. He did, just made a flawless performance and uh, he made everybody start taking chances and uh, the chances that we all took failed. And he just kept doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then, you know, finally it was the 10th round and I had competed and I kind of like telling this story now, but like uh, we're leaving me and Jessica over to the rodeo every single day with each other and we're getting in the car. And he goes, man, I, I really screwed up today. I was like, what did you do? And as I kept picking my phone up because people were calling me, telling me not to miss this horse out. And all I can think about is missing this horse out now. And I was like, that's the dumbest thing I think you've ever told me, Jess. Like, <laughs> let's go over there. Let's do the same thing we've done for the last nine nights in a row. Get through our warm ups, go tape up, and then go spur bucking horses. The only thing different tonight is they're going to give you a gold buckle that says you're the world champion. And, uh, it had kind of worked itself out where like, unfortunately I was weirdly in the pecking order where I was always at the beginning of the, the, sh the set of the bareback ride. And he was the last guy out. So we would swap help. Well, this night I was sixth to last. I mean, so I was ninth and Cole was at the front. So Cole rode and then me and Jess pulled my horse. And then when Jess came in, me and Cole pulled Jess and got his rigging ready. Well, Jess has got like two people to go in front of him and he is ghost white. Mm. And I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? So like, if anyone's ever seen me, like obviously in the arena, but on the, like the 15 minutes before I get on a bucking horse or the 15 minutes after, like my adrenaline is running high. And uh, so I got in his face and I started yelling at him. And then at the end of it, and I started yelling some things that I'm not going to repeat to it, but, uh, <laughs> the end of it I ended up hitting him like I like slapped him on the chest and I said you need to go get what's yours now and then he like finally like his face kind of woke himself back up and this is to the point where he has to put his glove back on like he is it is go time Wow. so like you know it kind of sparked him back up and he didn't make like a very good ride but he got the job done at the end of the day and I, I was really happy and proud for him Without a doubt. What a cool story too. And to have somebody like you for, for each other, it doesn't matter when the roles are switched, who's winning, who's not. You guys genuinely care for each other. You genu genuinely want each other to win. And that's inspiring. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, you know, those two are my brothers, you know, like they're, they're not blood, but they're my brothers. And like, you, you do spend so much time with them, you know, in the summer, I mean, you're living in the back of a pickup pretty much with two other grown men. I mean, like you spend a lot of time <laughs> with them and uh you know you just they're your brothers at the end of the day you want what's best for them oh yeah and you guys truly have set the bar really high in rodeo it's really incredible to watch you guys actually um whenever you're up together cheer each other on behind the scenes and i encourage everyone out there too to do the same you know watch you guys on the buck and shoots watch you guys interact with each other it's it's really awesome and then along that same line what's it like then having you know, millions of people cheering your name, cheering you on, and then balancing the pressure of trying to stay humble, trying to keep your head right, because it is a big mental game. I just think remembering where you came from, you know, remembering that you, everybody in this world puts your pants on one leg at a time. So whether what you do in, uh, in your sport, in your life, you know, like you should never look down your nose at anybody. You know, so I think that's been the biggest thing, you know, like I, I have felt like over the years, I'm still the same guy that bought his bought his rookie card that I am the guy that's 10 years into this now. You know, I don't feel like I've changed no matter what my 
accomplishments are you know like they're great and I love them and uh, I've done some really great things in the sport and I plan on doing more but at the end of the day I've just done things in my life Tim, that's exactly the right attitude to have. And not a lot of people in the industry can say that. So I'm very impressed with you on that. But speaking of future plans, before we go, let's talk about the 2023 season that's already well underway by now. It's um, probably almost, you know, you're you're gearing up for the summer. The stakes are high. You're starting with a new game plan. What's your game plan for this year to make sure that you're sitting better or on top um, going into the NFR? I'm going to play it pretty close to what I did last year. I'm going to go get on the horses that I really want to get on. Um, I'm going to do my best at all these, at all these rodeos showing up, making sure that my body's in the best shape it can be, that my mind's in the right shape it can be. And, uh, just showing up and showing out every chance I get, if I got an opportunity to win, I'm going to take it. Um, if I don't have an opportunity to win at your rodeo, I'm probably not going to come to your rodeo and I'm going to take that, uh, that time to get my body better, you know, and I played that, played that pretty honest last year. and it was really working. You know, I had, before I got hurt, I'd been to 37 rodeos and I was the number one guy in the world. So that was a, that was a really good strategy for me last year. I felt like I was riding as good, if not the best I've ever rode before that injury. And I'm going to play that pretty close to the exact same way. I really held on to what you said. You um, are going to pick the horses that you want to ride. You get to go to the rodeos with the horses and the stock that you want to ride. Talk more about that because now that you're, you know, established and you're more of a pro and your name is a household name, you get to do that more. So you've proved your way. You've made your way. Tell us about that, that side of it. Cause not a lot of people get there either. Yeah. I mean, you know, it is a random draw for the horses that you get on, but there is always the best horse in the pen and the worst horse in the pen. And it doesn't matter how good you are. At the end of the day, if you don't have something that is even close to the best horse in the pen or the second best or the third best, they only pay so many holes and you're paying to play. And with what it costs to go up and down the road, what it costs to to play this game, you're better off staying at the house sometimes and just making sure that your body's good. And, you know, I got through a, a drawing slump there last year where there was 19 different times where I didn't even have an opportunity to win a check. So I just stayed at the house. and. Yeah, I mean, it's not the way I want to. I've never entered a rodeo with plans on turning out or planning not to come. But, you know, I've done that in the past where I went and got on those 19 horses and I beat my body up and I just did it for free. And, you know, I'm just not at the point in my career anymore where I'm going to do that. And that's not for everybody either. I know when, I mean, in my heart and in my brain, if I know I got a chance to win when I show up and I'm excited about the animal that I'm getting on, I'm going to make a really good ride and the horse is probably going to be good and I'm probably going to win or at least catch a good check. And that was how I I played that out in my head last year. And then it, it penciled out on paper when it got done too. I mean, there wasn't a lot of a lot of people that could go to 37 rodeos and then take off the last six weeks of the regular season and come into the NFR in the top eight. Not many at all that could say that. You're one of the very few. And that right there alone proves how good of a cowboy you are and how strategic you were planning early on for things like that. It's almost like you planned for something, right? You were prepared, prepare for the worst, expect the best. And knowing that you've had the taste of winning Cheyenne, Prescott, very large rodeos, what's your game plan? What what rodeos are you headed to this summer? What are what's going to be your strategy overall um, for the whole summer? Not even just Cowboy Christmas alone, but just trying to hit as many good ones, big ones as you can. We're going to go to every big rodeo that we possibly can in the week. Um, Not that I I don't care about the circuit system, but there's so many big tour rodeos that go on that I can't delegate 15 rodeos to my circuit that you can, by the time you get done placing at all 15 rodeos, you could have won that in two tour rodeos. You know, I can't, can't justify the swing there. And the NFR Open is over top of Calgary, and I'll always go to Calgary over top of the NFR Open. No offense to the NFR Open. I think they put on a great event. Um, But Calgary is Calgary at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of my game plan. You know, we're just going to – we're going to get in the hunt. We're going to enter the biggest rodeos. We're going to put our our names in there, and we're going to – it'll be wolves against wolves every time. And, like, I think that keeps you – that keeps you motivated. That keeps you hungry. I think a lot of times when you – you move down to like a circuit system rodeo, you feel like it should be a layup 
And at the end of the day, it's still an animal. It's still a bucking horse underneath you and you still have to do your job at a very high level. And uh, I think that gets people in methodical thinking and methodical riding. So I want to make sure that if we're showing up, we have to ride at our very best. And, uh, you know, hopefully our drawing skills are on point. They, they will be. I have faith for you guys. <laughs> and you guys are so strategic with everything. So I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to be a great summer run, a great end to the 2023 season this year. Lots of in, lots of things in store for you, both personally, professionally. I'm just so inspired and so ready to watch your journey. I know everyone else, else out there is as well. And if we get the chance to follow you somewhere, where can everyone find you? I, I know you're big on social media. So give yourself a plug. Let's give the chance for everyone to reach out and watch your story and see how you shine. Yeah, my my real thing is uh, official Tim O'Connell on Instagram. That's where a lot of my, well, that and my Facebook page. I have a Tim O'Connell Facebook page. That's a like a fan page. I post my schedules on there. I post my rides on there. The Cowboy Channel does a great job at helping us uh, get our rides, get our media, and get everyone. So we we post the weekly um, places where I'm going like officially if it's on that page then i'm going there for sure so and then usually underneath there we will put if it's on the cowboy channel or the cowboy channel plus app in what time uh that's all riding but those are my two main pages where everyone can follow me at and uh get the insight of what we're doing how we're doing it that's so great. I know I appreciate seeing your schedule as well. So thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time out of your very busy week this week, um, taking the time to talk with us and share with us your story. I feel like we've gotten to know a little bit more about you. So thank you for continuing to be your genuine self and good luck down the rodeo road.